Welcome back. I am Dr. Ruckus, bringing you a new deck every single day. And today we are playing Wandering Epper in Mono White Aggro. Did extremely well today, winning 71% of games over the course of an hour. Let's talk about what worked and what didn't work in this deck with Wandering Epper. There are a lot of interesting things to talk about. So first, let's talk about the structure. Um, I wanted to try out Wandering Emperor. She fits in the four drop slot. This means it took away some slots from the captain. Because of that, we actually run a lower curve. When you're playing the captain, you're incentivized to run a higher curve because if you're going to get a free card off of it, you'd much rather hit a three drop than a one drop. So I tend to cut it down to just four hopeful initiates and then put more in the two and three drop slot. But because we cut captain down, we're actually now shifting back to a lower curve. So we have four hopeful initiates, three ushers, and then one eater of virtue down there as well. This card is pretty sweet. Um, it's really hard to make. Or they, Wizards hasn't made many good artifacts. They make them, you know, expensive to play and then expensive to equip, and then it just sucks. Um, it needs to either equip for free, like Mall of the Skyclaves, or be cheap. And they made a cheap one, so this is kind of sweet. One mana to play, one mana to equip. Uh, gives the equipped creature plus two, plus oh, and then essentially, even if that creature dies, any of its keywords, like flying, vigilance, double strike, etc., stay on either a virtue, and then when you equip the next thing, you keep those keywords. So the things that combos with... Thalia. If you put it on Thalia and Thalia dies, then the next thing you equip has first strike. Um, you can get lifelink from Intrepid Adversary and Vigilance from Adeline. That's kind of sweet. Um, I'd say, I mean, just any combination of those is brutal, right? If Thalia dies and you could put a first strike on your lifelinker, that's brutal. And if you put first strike, first strike and lifelink on your um, Vigilance, <laughs> Adeline, that's brutal. And I guess we have Flyer technically an Elite Spellbinder, but kind of a small portion of the deck. This card is sweet. I think one of is totally right in the deck. Uh, I don't think you really need more than that because this is a very creature-focused deck. You want to be pumping the entire squad with Intrepid Adversary, but one of feels right, and there are a lot of good keywords to play off of it. So yeah, definitely, I think, give one of a shot in this deck. All right, two drops. You know all the two drops. Evangel, I just want to repeat, every time I play this card, I like this card more and more. This card is an absolute powerhouse. It puts so much power and toughness onto the field, and when you are the aggressor, and you can just tap down all your opponent's stuff every turn and get in for more damage. It's unstoppable, basically. So, four of this card, for sure. If you were ever down on the Evangel, the card is absolutely nuts. All right, and then we'll briefly touch on the three-drop slot. We've got Cathars, Apparition, because there are a lot of creature decks out there. Three Adeline and one Spellbinder, just because I like the versatility of being able to hit that off the captain if needed. All right, so then the biggest question, is the Wandering Emperor good, and where does it fit in the deck? So, the biggest issue I have with this card at least that I had today, is that it does not play well with Thalia, which is not that surprising. Thalia makes it cost 5 mana instead of 4, and when you're running a 22 land deck, that makes a big difference, because you're really just trying to get to that 4th land drop, and then you either, you know, play your doubled up adversary, Evangel, or one of your 4 drops, and having this cost 5 when you play Thalia is a big blow. So much so that I think you really only run one or the other in the deck. I don't think you can really run Thalia and the Wandering Emperor in the same deck. And I think they fill very different roles as well. Thalia is great against control decks, anything casting non-creature spells. And I don't think that's really the Wandering Emperor's niche. I think, um, you know, if he flashes in on your opponent's turn and you make a 2-2 Samurai against control, they're just not that concerned about it. I mean, the theory is that, okay, you've got two bodies, you've got a Planeswalker and a creature. Now their Doomscar doesn't kill the Planeswalker, but it doesn't really put on enough pressure. And I think against control, what you really want is pressure or, you know... Um, putting, you know, delaying their cards so that you can kill them quick enough. So Thalia and Adeline are great pressure and delay cards, but Wandering Emperor does not fill that role. So I think this is not a good card against Control, at least in this deck. What it is good against is aggro, right? If your opponent is swinging in with clerics or, you know, gruel wolves or whatever, and you can flash this in, minus two their thing, next turn you either make a samurai or plus one counter one of your guys and grant it first strike, that's a better play pattern. But even though I don't think that's absolutely nuts, I think if you want to play this card and maximize this card, you want to play more Adeline. Because I think the best sequence of events is you play Adeline, and the next turn they swing in, you flash this guy in, minus their exile tap creature, and then you can put a plus one counter and give first strike to Adeline. Since Adeline has Vigilance, she can stay back and defend the Emperor. I, by the way, I love that saying, defend the Emperor. It makes me very excited to play this card in general. And of course, you can play a creature that next turn to defend the Emperor as well, or make the Samurai token, but I think Vigilance is going to be more important when you have a Planeswalker that you want to protect. So if you want to play the Emperor, I would add another Adeline, um, probably drop one Skyclave app, and I think cut all three Thalias, which is a big blow against Control, and put in maybe one Eberhardt and two Sentinel, something like that. And obviously, if you put in Eberhardt, it now has double strikes, so you can play that off of Eater of Virtue for a lot of value there. So maybe go to Everheart, one Sun Gold Sentinel, something like that. So that's the big trade-off. Um, 
I don't think the Wandering Emperor is nuts in this deck. I think it's decent, but it's it's tough to lose Thalia, which is one of your big answers against control. So that's my thoughts. Obviously, the deck is totally fine. Won 71% of games, so the deck is good. But we're just trying to figure out, like, really, is the Wandering Emperor better than the Inquisitor Captain and the 4-drop slot? And I'm definitely leaning towards no. But try it out. I loved Eater. I loved Eater of Virtue. And uh, fun deck. Great results. Oh, man. Lastly, this card is nuts. Iganjo, forgive me if I'm pronouncing that wrong, Seat of the Empire. Can play it as a land or just channel it for only three mana and deal four damage target attacking or blocking creature. Cost one less for each legendary creature you control, which could include Adeline, Thalia, and um, Eberhardt. This, when I saw this card in my hand, I was like, oh shit, this is nuts. Three mana basically kill any of my opponent's blocking creatures or attacking creatures, and it doubles as a land when needed. I think more than one is the right copy. I think you can play it. I think you can get away with at least two of these bad boys in the deck. This card is sweet. All right. That's the deck. Hope you enjoy the gameplay. Let's dive right in. All right. Decent enough. No two drop, but at least we have land. And we're on the play. Usher of the Fallen. Up against Mick Master. Interesting. A little Orzhov action. Okay. Hands shaping up to be okay. We actually do fill in our curve here with the Ushin. Not terrible. Could be worse. Do they give us something juicy to nab this turn is the question. They do. I like it. All right. Do we Skyclave? Give him back a 2-2. Two -two. I think that's probably better at this point. I mean, when's the next time we're really going to flip to nighttime? Uh, no spells. I don't think we're casting no spells for quite a while. Let's just go Skyclave here. All right. Get in there. Voice of the Blessed. All right, I think we'll probably just take that, too. Relentless here. <laughs> yep. Goodbye. Sweet Prince. All right, continue to get in there. Let's see if they go Captain this turn. Inquisitor Captain, yep, right on time. What do they nab here? Valkyrie, okay. We don't hit the land. We're pretty badly brickwalled at this point. Sadly. If we had the double Evangel, that would be huge, but we do not. Probably guess just get Aspirant down and grow the Usher, I think. I think that's our best and only play, sadly. No attacks. Effectively brickwalled. Get the Usher a little bit bigger. I think we're looking to get um, Evangel and tap down a bunch of stuff. Let's see if they double spell this turn, though. Another captain. Tough. Alright. We have serious issues now. Um, we probably need to start flipping Brutal Cathar if we want a chance here. I doubt they're going to attack really for a while, even. Adeline. Adeline is big, but I actually think Brutal Cathar is better. Unfortunately, it's a double spell. We're not really going to want to double spell anyway right now. Right, next turn we'd have to draw land to double spell these, and we'd rather not do that. So I think we're actually going to play Adeline here still. Something has a 5-4, which is decent. No attack still. They could gain enough life to make the voice big enough. Um, Yeah, we'll put it here. We do need to start flipping the Cathar, though. That's got to be part of the plan to win. Oof. Opponent has it all this game. Triple Captain. Double Captain the Mimic. We are stuck on our third land. All right. Adeline can still get in there and trade with something, at least. Okay, they do start attacking, which is interesting. This can't even nab a uh, voice of it as Vigilance. All right, so we hit the next land. They have a lot of blockers. We can pick off the Valkyrie. We could play Captain. We could tap down two things. Definitely far away from lethal. 
I think we want to play the captain and try to hit a something to take one of these voices. We do it. I think we're going to take the immediate threat concerning us. All right. Just get in like that. It's a lot of damage. We might chump block with the captain here. Or double block even. Alright, they do double block. That's okay. Who wants to get bigger? Um, yeah, we can continue to put this on the Usher, I guess. I guess the Captain's going to be better. Especially since it has Vigilance. How much can they hit us for this turn? Point up to 20. We're down to 12. And we flip to Nighttime. And now if we double spell, we flip back. That is 1,000% the play. Good game. Uh, I guess that means we have them, as long as we double spell. So we can double the Guardian Evangel this turn, I think. We can also pump the entire squad. The thing is, I don't know if they have Vanishing Verse. So let's be a little bit safer, I think, and not risk the Brutal Cathars. Tap down uh, you. I'm not sure if they have Vanishing Verse or not. They could be bluffing. Seems to land with no stick, I guess. Now we've successfully double spelled. I didn't see any stick there. Go like that. They take their free chump lock there. Alright, down to seven, and we flip. Uh, sure, we can put it on the Vigilance one. Take you. Take you. There's an argument to be made for taking the Captains to turn off the next Mimic. A definite possibility. Do they top deck Vanishing Verse? I think at this point, with the Intrepid Adversary, we should have them anyway. Aura. Yeah, I don't think that's enough with Lifelink. We can't do the plus the instance. Uh... Oh, wow. We can play Wandering Emperor and give one of these guys... I think we're just going to pump Squad instead. Yeah, that's just going to be better. That should be lethal. Alright, give it to him. Bam. Bam. All right, Mono White coming on top. Unfortunately, didn't really get to use the Wandering Emperor in this matchup. I have to continue to watch that and see if she has a good slot. I'm thinking against Mono Green should be really good. A little light on land, but otherwise, okay. Have Thalia against Control as needed. A lot of two drops. Two lands and a lot of two drops. Not the worst thing in the world. Jorman Gander. Blue. Seems like a good Thalia turn. Land is okay. Start working towards our double Evangel or double Adversary. Cathar, not what we need right now. We might play it out because we're not going to have any targets in this deck, right? Hmm, let's get the Aspirant growing. Put the token on the Aspirant because they are more interested in killing Thali at this point. Land. Valkyrie. Alright, it is Clerics. So that's pretty sweet. Man, we can go for the aggro play. But it's probably more important just to take um, the Valkyrie when we can. So we'll go like this this turn and maybe double tap down Evangel next turn. Pump Squad the following turn. Something like that. So now they actually... Uh, we'll put it on the Thalia. Uh, First Striker is going to matter against them. Another Valkyrie. Okay. We can tap it down this turn. We can tap down both of these guys. Wandering Emperor. Five mana because of my own Thalia. All right, screw me. <laughs> yeah, I think we'll go a v double Evangel this turn. If we pump squad, that only gets Thalia in. So we'll go double Evangel. All right. 
Keep the damage coming. Get that first striker growing. Now, if we're going to play the Intrepid Adversary next turn, that would let us get through you two. So we're going to do it like this. Because that makes everyone 4 fours for the most part. And then um, we can get through with all of them with Intrepid Adversary. Even if they play more like just Valkyries or something like that. We can also just tap them down again next turn. Okay, here comes another Valkyrie. I think we would rather them chump block away the Valkyries rather than tap them down because they're getting double life gain off this every single turn. So let's try to force them to um, trade here. I think that's going to be a better outcome for us long term. All right, pump squad. Everyone except you. That's lethal. That's 16 damage. They have to block two of them. So we're going to get rid of one of the Valkyries here, which I think is superior to... Actually, did we have lethal? Let's see. They could have gone block three. No, I don't think it would have been lethal last turn. Oh, wait. It would have. Ah, shit. We missed lethal. Right? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. No, it would have been one point short. Okay. And where do we want to put the counter? Let's make the Cathar big enough to get through next turn, I guess. All right. No, I don't think we missed lethal. That would have been... 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. They had 12 life. Here comes the captain. We've got one more Evangel. I think we're absolutely going to get through this. Up to 7. Tap down the Valkyrie. Yeah, we'll just go for the double tap down here. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Evangel, Evangel and Adversary are just so damn good. Like... People don't really play Mono White that much these days, but those two cards are absolute powerhouses. Pretty sweet opening hand. Definitely a keep. Alright. Um, not sure we're up against yet. Could very well be Clerics. Could be Esper Control. I don't see a lot of Demir Control. Could be um, Demir Zombies. Feeling less like Clerics at this point. Suspicious Stowaway. 2 mana 1 1 can't be blocked when it deals damage to a player. Draw a card, then discard a card. It is daybound. Flips away 2 1. Seafaring also can't be blocked. Draw a card. Okay. Interesting. I don't really know what this deck is. So we'll probably just drop Thalia this turn, I guess. Draw a card, then discard a card. And they would like to flip the night time to draw a free card every turn. Yeah, we can't block it. Okay. Draw a card, discard a card. What are, What is this deck? I can see this in, like, party, because it is a rogue, but this is Demir? Demir unblockable. Demir evasive creatures. Ooh. Oh, yeah. It's ninja time, baby. Okay, okay. Obviously. Is this a ninja? No, these are rogues. All right. That's obviously what's happening now. And we don't have a great way to interact with it. I think we'll take their only blocker here. I mean, this guy... Hmm. Yeah, that's fine. Definite stick here. Doesn't really matter if they kill this guy right now. Even if they kill Cathar and get it back. It's not like uh does a whole lot. Ooh, okay. That kills Thalia, sadly. Man, it's been a while since i played against rogues. Alright, I wonder if this is rogues with a couple new ninjas on top. Rune Crab. They're gonna mill us, too. Dude, what's going on? Alright, gotta get back in the rogue mindset. Can't block this guy. And they are gonna mill us. Wow. I wonder if we hit land, though. And play the captain. Can also go Evangel and get it more damage. You come to a river. Wow, they really are unblockable. And they have Zerathon. Interesting. Alright, we hit land, which is pretty big here. They have three mana open. I don't even know if they run counter spells. We could tap down both these guys and get in for a little bit of damage. That's not hugely valuable. We can also just play the captain. I think we're going to play the captain here. Do they have any counter spells? We haven't seen any counter spells yet. Let's attempt a captain. Wow. Damn. 
Well, no attacks here. Punished. Punished. I'm nervous because I don't want to lose to this deck because I don't think it's that good. But um, they're definitely pulling out the stops right now. And they're milling us too. Not in an incredibly fast pace, but still. And the Soaring Thought Thief has effectively brick walled us for the time being. Hall of the Storm Giants. It's pretty interesting. Alright, we flip to nighttime, which is actually very decent. I think we'll play the Intrepid Adversary this turn and, and pump the team. They can flash in another Soaring Thought Thief. I guess the Evangel is going to be a little bit better. Alright, let's go like this. Is there another counter spell? No. Alright, tap you down. Play you. Next turn we'll pump the entire squad, <coughs> which will be a ton of damage. We definitely have something, though. Alright, we attack here. Get the trigger off successfully on the initiate. And take a boatload of damage. Nice. Drop the initiate as well. I don't think they're running Meat Hook Massacre in this deck. Prove me wrong. I think we'll take the Thought Thief. It's their biggest blocker at this point. Now what? Attack. Cycle. They don't have a blocker back now, though. We're going to send in a big squad this coming turn. Mirror Shell Crab. Blood Chief's Thirst. All right, they get back both creatures. That hurts a little bit, but it's not impossible to get through, given our intrepid adversary coming. Continue to mill us down to 38. Still a long way to go. It's a good draw. One mana open. Could have Fading Hope. They scoop there. All right. <laughs> Honestly, I was getting nervous because I really didn't want to lose that deck because it doesn't look that good. <laughs> we managed to get there. Despite that uh, Jawari on the captain, that was that was tough. <laughs> All right, sure. Let's see what we're up against. <clears throat> this control will drop Thalia. Otherwise, we might drop the Luminarch, get it growing. Limpa Vias. Probably means clean view. Something like that. Maybe clean passage. Not sure. All right, drop the planes here. On the play feels good. Yeah, that feels like control to me. What do you think? Hit him with the good old Thalia action. And you're not going to like that. Attack first. No stick. They're priced out of whatever they wanted to do, I think. Uh, they probably want to kill Thalia more, so let's put the Luminarch down. Also, no double white, so we are escaping from um, Divine Purge for at least two more turns, it seems. So given that, I think we do want to attempt to go wide here. We'll do this before combat to threaten to tap down their uh, lands. Alright, nice. Alright, we'll see if they go land uh, Divine Purge or not. That's the question. Yeah, we'll spread out the love, I think. White land, divine purge. Yep. Okay. Not the end of the world. Another Thalia. We can go Thalia and Aspirant again. It's pretty good. Counter here. <clears throat> Second divine purge. Sure. Divine Emperor. Interesting. Do you want to even give him the chance to counter it? Maybe not. What do I think? I think I'd rather play it now and get the Samurai token. I don't really want to give him the chance to counter it. Samurai token acquired with Vigilance. Looking pretty badass here. Key to the Archive. Comes in tapped. Hmm. 
Probably minus again. We can actually take it with Skyclave app, which isn't terrible. They didn't spend their turn killing the Wandering Emperor. I think I'm okay taking their key to the archive. Hmm. Especially if they're stuck on land, actually. I like that a lot. So let's go ahead with that path. We can also tax them with Dahlia, but... I'm digging this. Take their key. I think we will minus again. Just to get uh, continue to go wide here. Get in for two damage. Put it down to 12. We got a mix of threats on the board here. Potentially Thalia next turn. Here comes Doomscar anyway. They get back a 4-4, which does hurt. That's a decent draw. Plus one counter. Makes it tough to get through. Can protect the Emperor. I just like saying the phrase, protect the Emperor. That just sounds so badass. To Fairy, okay. Now we can tap down their only blocker with Sigurdian Evangel and get through to Teferi. Yeah, they tap down the Adeline. They divide you, okay. Well, so much for protecting the Emperor. That's sad. Very sad. More land is not terrible. Five mana. Adeline plus one of these intrepid adversaries. Actually, not enough mana to haul. There goes one, there goes two. Yep, that's game. All right, good game. That was kind of interesting to see the Evangel in action, but could have really come back after the horror. If we also didn't draw Brutal Cathar, it wouldn't have really mattered given all their interaction, but eh, just interesting to watch. Decent curve, especially against any kind of aggro deck. Even okay against control. All right, it's mono green. I really hope we draw the Wandering Emperor this game. Nice courtesy tap by the opponent. Drop the Usher. We will have answers. We'll see if it's good enough to beat their Blizzard Brawls. Could also be Wolves. Find out very soon. It is Wolves. Mm -hmm. Alright. No attacks. Next turn we'll get off either Skyclave app or Cathar. Probably Skyclave app on the 2-2. I think it's just a 2-2 uh, token back. They're not going to have Blizzard Brawl though. They will have play with fire, potentially. It is Naya Wolves. So Cathar is coming next turn. Ugh, just what a terrible sequence of events all the time. It's so hard to be on the draw against this deck. We could trade away both resources here. And then take um, the pack leader. What do we think about that? Man, I don't love that. Especially against Thalia, it gets better with Intrepid Adversary. No blocks. I think we're going to app you, because that gives back a 2-2, which isn't as bad. Are we going to block anyway? The thing is, we're not going to block anyway. And if they know that and they're smart, then it doesn't matter to hold it back. So we're going to attack anyway, take more damage this turn, and then restabilize next turn and try to go from there. Turn 4, Captain. Let's see it. Turn 4, anything, is really good. Halana and Elena is brutal, too. They have the Thalia, though. I wonder if they have... Uh... It's just a pup. Okay. That's not so bad. And a Cathar. That's a little worse. Take our Skyclave app, presumably. They take Thalia. They have a non-creature spell they want to play? No, they take Skyclave app. Alright. Well. Interesting. The old Cathar, um... Yeah. Okay. Another Skyclave app. Well, that's pretty good against Cathar. I would rather do that and not give them back the next one. So we're going like this. We're down to 8 life, though. We have to be careful here. Take you. Another app. Take you. Our first striker holds them back pretty well. So we'll attempt to attack here. There's an argument to saving it so that we can pump squad with Intrepid Adversary. But I'm okay trading away resources at this point. Okay. Trade off. We have Thalia back to hold. And one more Brutal Cathar to go. 
Also have Pump Squad plus Lifelink in the Intrepid Adversary. This is a close game, though. Like, at any point, they could totally escape us, but so far, we seem to have stabilized. Here comes Tovalar. Okay. Again, we'll nab it with Brutal Cathar. It's a pretty good outcome for us. Have to think about the creature land. Can power up for three, maybe four next turn. That's an important part of the calculation as well. They're thinking, though. Why? What could they have that would give them pause here? Right? Play with fire? I don't run play with fire in this deck, though. It's too tight. You have so many good cards to hit off a captain and Tovalar that you don't really want it. Adeline's decent as well. I think we're definitely going to go Cathar here. Why is there so much hesitation, though? Do they have Snakeskin Veil? I think plan is the same regardless. There's definitely a stick, though. It could just be Layer the Hydra, though. There's a lot of thought that last one. Let's see if they have anything here. Alright, I think they... Realistically, what could they have? If they have any kind of pump spell and they blow out Skyclave out, that's pretty bad. So we're just going to attack with Dahlia. Yeah, I think the amount of thinking means they have something here. Either play with fire or... Um, nothing. So strange. Not sure what the priority hold was for. If we go land, we can pump squad and get lifelink. That'd be big. We can also play Adeline, which is going to be huge. Another Tovalar, okay. That makes Intrepid Adversary look a little worse. It can let us attack with Dahlia, though. Evangel. Man, we're just short of that next, uh, that last land. Alright, so I guess it's going to be Adeline this turn, and no attacks, sadly. If we do nothing and flip, we're not quite ready to double spell anyway, so we'll hold off on that option. Adeline's huge, though. We basically need to hit land. If we hit land this coming turn, we're in a fantastic position. No attacks. Hold here. Fourth land. Either tap down both of them. Get in for seven, nine. Uh, that's that's pretty good. 18, 14. Okay. Are they going to try to get in here with anyone? Looks like not. We didn't hit the next land. Come on, deck. I think we do want to get in with Adeline. See if they want to double block. I would prefer for them to trade off Tovalar and the pack leader. So we might tap down the Stormseeker. Actually, if we tap down the pup, they would have to chump block with two good creatures. So let's do it that way, actually. Just attack like that. We're holding on here. So if they want to block, they have to double block with two good creatures now. Whereas if we attacked and we didn't tap down the pup, they could just go, you know, throw away the pup plus something else. They just take the chump block. Go down to eight. All right, this is huge. We actually can turn this around at this point. It's going to be very close. Flip to nighttime. Why can't I see this? It's that so dark. This is a big turn here. We have to be very strategic about what we do. Make sure we don't get blown out by Tobolar's effects. Valorous Dance. Okay. We do have a First Striker. Trample and Haste. Attack all here. Alright, let's see if we can get him dead. They can pump for zero, but it can gain tr gain trample. Throw the first striker here. That's nine damage. We only need to block one more. We could take you out for free if we wanted to. Again, it's still nine damage, though. Now, if we swing back like this, it's like seven. Yeah, I think we'll just go like this. You have Trample. 
So that's actually eight damage right there. So that's not enough. Um, you do not have trample though. I think they have lethal here. I think we have to throw one of these under the bus, sadly. Unless they forget. How much do I want to rely on them messing up? <sighs> I mean, that means we have to throw one more thing under the bus. I think we have to. I don't think we have a choice. So if we're going to kill one of these... I think it has to be like this, really sadly. I'd rather them not get back the Brutal Cathar, I guess, somehow. No, that's not possible anyway. Yeah, I think it has to be like this. Otherwise, they just have lethal, right? Because if they give you Trample... Um... Now, right now, we're taking 6 damage. And they get back a 3-3. Three, three. We go down to 2. Draw a bunch of cards. Get a blocker. Rahilda comes down as well. Now, if we take their only blocker... Damn, do we want to get Rahilda? Probably want to get Rahilda. Over the token. I think we're going to take Rahilda. If we hit land... Wow, we do. So what does that mean? It means we have a blocker for next turn. They can get back a 3-3. We do not have lethal. We're definitely doing this, though. We don't have any other options. So if we attack all, they get back <laughs> both of these guys. We attack with you. I think you're definitely getting in there. They trade and get a 3 3 back. That's not that good. I think it's just you. Even though you hold back the force, I think we'll block with the intrepid adversary and get um, lifelink. <sighs> this game was close. Ranger class. Okay. That's interesting, but maybe it doesn't change much this turn. Level up. Do they attack with the token force us to chump block with the adversary? I think if they don't attack, that's probably a mistake. We're very close to winning. They do attack. Yeah, we have to trade off the adversary now. They know that. We will get a bunch of life here. Yep, that's how it has to be. Up six. And of course, no attacks here, Brutal Cathar. Wow. It's not lethal though, right? Take you. They scoop. Woo! That was a close game. Man, we were just hanging in there by a thread, but managed to get the rest of the way. Damn, that was that was close. And that, I mean, I played this. This was my favorite deck from uh, before Kamigawa, basically. And it, it's brutal. So big, big win there coming out on top. If you liked that video, click on one of these two next. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I am Dr. Ruckus, and I'll catch you next time.